享。Hello, welcome to this final video in the series on statistical quality control or statistical process control. In the first video, we talked about the idea of process control and the general idea of control charts. In the second video, we saw how to make the control charts for variables. In this third video, we will see how to create control charts for attributes. Per se, the process uh, remains exactly the same. Uh, we find the center limit for whatever item we want to control. We find plus minus three sigma deviations. If all the data falls within the plus minus three standard deviations, we say that uh, the process is in control and that the variations are just normal variations associated with the process. And um, if any of the values are above or below the control lines, we say that, well, there's a special cause, there's an assignable cause present, which needs to be investigated and corrected. So before we start with this, um, let's look at the slide which we have already looked at the idea of attributes means anything which can be counted number of products number of defects number of defectives uh, number of particular color of products in a sample now, now anything anything which is number can be done using attributes right so the multiple attribute charts here and and they are which attribute chart depends on these two parameters mentioned on the table on the left so the first is the idea of difference between defectives and defects Defectives are non-confirming products. So I have standards for a product and um, if a particular product does not fall in that standard, it's defective. It's too thick, too thin, too light, too heavy, whatever. That's a defective product. But defects could be, could be non-confirmities within a good product. So when I buy a used car, all the number of dents in a used car, all the number of scratches on paint in a used car are, are defects. That doesn't make a used car defective, but these are defects. So, uh, or when I submit uh, essay to Grammarly, where I'm checking, the Grammarly package tells me that, well, the essay has 20 grammar mistakes. So they have 20 defects. The essay is not defective, but the essay has 20 defects. That's the difference between defects and defective. Uh, that's the first criteria. And second criteria is uh, whether the sample size is constant or keeps changing. Um, and if you look at these four charts, what you see here is this, this thing that before the plus minus sign in the formula, what we have, that terminology gives us the center line. And what we have after the plus minus sign, it's the three standard deviations. So plus minus to create the control limits. Okay, don't worry too much about these formulas. All these formulas, why they are the way they are, the assumptions behind them is available online. So if you're confused, uh, just look around or, or leave a message here and I'll try to help you out. Okay, let's just jump to the Excel sheet and try to create these control charts. So we're going to control NP chart. Uh, if you remember from that sheet, NP chart is for defectives and when the sample size is constant. So I have a constant sample size of 500 units. So first thing I do here is calculate P, which is the proportion defective. So I write it down here, um, proportion, P -R -O -P -O -R -S 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 defective, which is P, which is nothing but eight divided by 500. To create a plus sign here, drag it down. So all these calculations, I create average p-value or average defectives. Is first I find the sum or the total number of defective products that I have, and similarly I find the total number of samples that I tested. So the average number of defectives is this, which is 422 total defects by total sample size or 0.28 or 2.8%, uh, 0.028 or 2.8% of my products are defectives. Now, I, I need to substitute this P bar term in the formula, but to make my life simple, uh, what we'll do here is we'll use the something called as uh, define naming or cell naming. So go to formula, tab here, formula, and then say define name. And go here, I define the name. And this particular cell I call as PB because it's P bar. You can name it whatever you want. And then I say that the name is restricted to this worksheet, which is NP. That's the worksheet name. Be careful, ensure that you name the right worksheet. Here. And okay, any one of these can be N. So I name this 500 as N. Uh, you'll see it in a bit. How do we use it? Just tolerate a few more seconds. I call this N. Again, I use only for this worksheet NP. And say, okay, very good. And then I come here, I define the center which is equal to n times p bar, n times p bar. 
I get a center. Then I need to find the upper control limit, UCL, which is the center plus three times square root of N times P bar times one minus P bar. Look at this, it's, it's just like, as if I'm writing in English, right? Formula, it, it, it makes it so easy. Enter um, lower control limits equal to the center minus uh, three times N times three times square root, I'm sorry, square root of N times P bar times one minus P bar. Okay, closed, yes. So the lower control limit, the minimum value we can use is zero. We cannot go lower than zero because that doesn't make sense, right? So if it's the mathematical calculation gives us a negative number, we put a zero there. But anyway, so once I have these three values, I select all three, come here, double click this, get all the values. And just like the previous session, um, select this, bring my cursor here, control, ta, 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 ta. select this, just perfect. And then go to the line chart, uh, insert chart, line chart, we can use any, I use this, and yeah, that's it. So it's saying, well, more or less the process is under control, but this point here, the third point, we have a problem, which we need to look at. But this is the idea about NP chart. P chart is, again, very similar, okay? So in, in P chart, uh, what do I do is, um, I, I calculated the proportion defective, it's very similar. Um, I've also um, probably, and then I can do equal to sum. If, one thing different, I'll go up, sorry, I'll just break off here and go back. If you see the sample size here keeps changing, we don't have a uniform sample size. That's why we use a P chart for defectives in this case, right? So I calculate average number of defective or the total number of defectives in all my calculations. Enter 422 defectives. Uh, so the average defective equal to this divided by this, which is P bar. And um, I'll also need the NA. I, I try to label everything, you know, because that makes my life easier uh, because I can forget something. So average Sample size is equal to average of this. Enter. Wow. So I have all the information. I go back to formulas, define name. I define name. I call this thing is NA, and I would put it in this worksheet P and say OK. I call this P bar and uh, put it in the worksheet. Same thing call it P bar, P B. Again, feel free to try different names and check it out if it works. Just this scope is just this spreadsheet and say, okay, um, well, so go ahead. Center is P bar. That's my center um, equal to P bar. I'll have to write that. Should work. Yes, it does. Upper control limit is P bar or is equal to this number center plus three times, I'm sorry, three times square root of P bar times bracket open one minus P bar times any. Right? And again, we, the, the capital is important. We are not capitalized it, so we'll use the small alphabet. So this is the upper control limit. I think there's an error here. So, uh, da, da, da. oh, this is divided by an M, sorry. So yeah, this is, and the lower control limit is equal to same thing, center plus or minus three times square minus three times square root of P bar times one minus P bar divided by any bracket closed. Should work. All right, it does. So all I have these values here. 
um, I can select double click here so we have this so proportion defects I can just select all these four uh, and go into line charts again insert see which of these lines is suitable to you and create and same thing here point number three is out of control the rest are all seemingly in control that's the idea C chart is the simplest of all if you look at the formula here it's a C bar plus minus so all I do is calculate C bar which is the average number of defects and here we are not concerned about sample size because we are assuming that the sample size is uniform equal to average of the number of defects and I call this C bar go into my formula define name I call this CB for C bar and I define it in the only the workbook for C or worksheet for C spreadsheet for C okay, okay. so my center Here is C bar is equal to CB. Upper control limit UCL is um, CB, which is this, which is equal to CB plus 3 times um, square root of CB. And lower control limit is equal to CB minus 3 times square root of CB. That's it. We have the values, drag it, copy it, create the control charts, check if the process is under control. That's C chart for you. And last is the U chart. U chart is used where uh, we said sample size is not constant. If you look at here, we don't have constant sample sizes. I'll find the average number of defects and uh, or, or the defects per uh, sample or per unit. Oh, so if you equal to sum here. This is the total number of defects equal to, I can copy this, this is how many I've sampled. So my P bar on an average would be this divided by this. So I have 0 0.05 defects or 0 or 5% defects um, per product. Um, yeah, and, and, and then I calculate proportion here, I calculate the U here which is equal to da, 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 this divided by this. This is my U value. I drag it down till here. I have all these U values which I'll plot. Um, now here, look at the formula. It does not say NA, it says NI. So I, what, what we are saying here, because the sample size changes, the control limits is also change for all the values depending on the sample size. Right? If the sample size is too many, we'll allow more defectives. But if the sample size is too less, we'll allow less. So control limits will keep changing. So UCL is equal to U bar, uh, which is, so let's define the names, right? We need to define U bar. So I didn't do that. I go here. This is my U bar. So the formulas, define name. I call it UB, U bar. And again, only the spreadsheet. Okay. So um, my center, I'll define that, equals UB. This is my center. Uh, UCL, which is equal to U bar, plus 3 times square root of UB divided by the sample size here. I mean, yeah, so that's the sample size here. Bracket closed give me some number here and LCL is similarly U bar minus 3 times square root of the U bar divided by the sample size. Yeah, that's it. Um, so I have these numbers. Again, if lower control limit is less than 0, if it's negative, we make it 0. So I have these values here. Um, I take all these values sorry some confusion and drag it till here all right and then put a line chart insert and um, yeah So yeah, if you look at here, the control limits vary, but again, this is giving us uh, the values and we see that 
um, process seems to be completely out of control. Lots of values above and beyond the control limits. But anyways, yeah, these are, this is a just general idea of how to make control limits uh, for attributes. Uh, thank you for staying with me for so much. Um, put your comments uh, below and uh, anything, I'll try to help you the best I can. Thank you.